You're with David House of Saving Health Ministries, and the Lord has given some amazing information that is going to be revealed in this video. Please make sure you watch the entire presentation. Some of you are familiar with the history of the Advent movement when William Miller gave the date concerning the second coming of Jesus, and we know that Christ was leading him, but even though the event did not come to pass, that did not mean what he was preaching was incorrect. And that history is now being relived. God has allowed the delay to test the hearts of those that profess to believe God's word to see if you truly believe the Bible, because you will see these events come to pass on the same day. Therefore, we are going to put the video in the description box and William Miller have the same experience. If you have not seen that video, please make sure you watch that video. We'll also put it in the description box that you may be familiar with the history of the Advent movement because this history is being repeated before your eyes and you are witnessing the loud cry just as the midnight cry. Therefore, we are now in a tarrying time, just as the Millerites were in a tarrying time. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you so much for your word. Please give us of thy Holy Spirit. Remove preconceived ideas that we may see what you are saying in light of Bible prophecy. Strengthen our faith is our prayer. In Jesus' name, we ask these blessings. Amen. Notice the headline, Biden orders airstrikes against facilities used by Iran-backed militia groups. Brothers and sisters, we are on the verge of war and we see that Biden has issued airstrikes on Iran-backed militia groups. We know that soon Iran, Russia, China will attempt an invasion of America and will have some level of success. Though they will not conquer America, there will be Americans that will be taken captive as a result. Notice here another headline confirming, it says Biden orders airstrikes in Iraq, Syria against Iran backed militia groups. Brothers and sisters, there will be retaliation in response to these airstrikes. And it shows us that Bible prophecy is true and that God's word cannot lie. Here the headline says, Iran vows retaliation in proper time for nuclear scientist killing. Now remember, this is the second Iranian leader that has been assassinated in one year. Here you see in the picture in Iran, they're burning pictures of President Trump and Joe Biden. Here it says, Iranian protesters burn images of President Trump and President Joe Biden during a rally Saturday in Tehran, Iranian leaders have blamed Israel and its close ally, the United States, for the assassination of a top Iranian nuclear scientist. So they're blaming Israel and the United States, and they have vowed retaliation. And remember, Iran still wants payback for the killing of Qassam Soleimani. Notice. Another headline here, it says World War Three fears surge as Russia threatens to retaliate after U.S. forces violate waters. Russia has demanded the U.S. stop violating its territorial waters and has said it reserves the right to retaliate. So there you see Russia is also threatening Iran, Russia and also China. Notice what it says here. Do not fear death. Chinese leader urges troops to prepare for war as tensions soar. Chinese troops have been ordered to train harder and prepare for a fight to the death by leader Xi Jinping as he warned them to get ready for war. War is on the horizon, brothers and sisters, and a surprise attack is imminent. And it's important to note that all three nations held joint military exercises just two months ago in September. Here it says Russia, China and Iran to hold massive joint military exercise. All three nations coming together for military exercises. And that wasn't the first time last year. They all three 
also held joint military exercises. Here in another article it says, here from December of 2019, China, Russia, and Iran hold joint naval drills in Gulf of Oman. So here we're seeing again, they've been working together and we can expect a surprise attack, an invasion upon American soil from all three nations. Now let's look at some scriptures that bring to view of both the war and the dark day tsunami taking place on the same day. Let us turn in our Bibles to Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. Here the Bible brings to view the east wind, which we know is referring to war from the east. Notice what it says. Their horses also are swifter than leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. Whenever you see horses and horsemen and chariots, it brings to view war. Then it says in verse 9, the east wind, they shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. So here we're seeing the east wind and individuals being gathered in captivity. We're talking about war coming from Russia and China. Notice what it goes on to say in chapter 2 in reference to this vision of the east wind. It says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. What is that appointed time? The month of November. Then it says, But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So God says that at the appointed time, at the end, it shall speak. So brothers and sisters, God is showing us that his word will come to pass. Now, so we're talking about the east wind as we examine the book of Habakkuk. Now turn with me to chapter 3. And verse 15 and 16, notice what the Bible says here in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, it says, Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters. So their horses came through the waters, or in other words, their tanks, their military equipment, their ships came through the waters. Then it says in verse 16, When I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Notice, here is an invasion concerning the ships traveling through the waters. War is what God is speaking about when we talk about the vision of Habakkuk. Understand, brothers and sisters, that God also is showing us that these two events of both the war and invasion upon American soil and the dark day and the tsunami can take place on the same day. Notice what God says in the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Amos 3, verse 14 and 15, it says that in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him. I will also visit the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. Some of you have seen our video concerning the close of probation upon the SDA church. This is when God will visit the transgressions of Israel, and we know that to be the dark day. Then it goes on to say in verse 15, And I will smite the winter house with the summer house and the houses of ivory shall perish talking about the white house talking about war and the great houses shall have an end saith the lord so at a time where god is visiting the iniquity of his people he also mentions the great houses the white house having an end that's war and the dark day let us come to another scripture turn with me to isaiah 5 we're going to see four scriptures that bring to view of these events happening on the same day. Isaiah 5 and verse 26. 
Notice what it says. The Bible says, And he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far, and I will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. We know that God's ensign is the Sabbath. Ezekiel 20 and verse 12 and Ezekiel 20 and verse 20 make it clear that the seventh day, Friday sundown until Saturday sundown is God's true day of worship, not Sunday. Notice what it goes on to say. And many will come with speed swiftly and embrace the third angel's message. Notice what it goes on to say now when this will happen. Verse 27, none shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken, whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. Their horses' hoofs shall be counted like flint and their wheels like a whirlwind. We know that a whirlwind represents war. We know that war represents a whirlwind based upon Amos 1.14. Daniel 11:40 and Jeremiah 4:11 through 13 both wind and whirlwind represent war. And a whirlwind in our language usually we use this term tornado. So if a person sees a tornado in their dream, God is talking about war. Let us come back to the text. Verse 29 says, "Their roaring shall be like a lion, they shall roar like the young lions." We know that roaring is prophesying according to Jeremiah 25 and verse 30 and Amos 3 and verse 8. It goes on to say, "Yea, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe, and none shall deliver it." So this is talking about individuals being taken captive as a result of war. Then it says in verse 30, And in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. This is talking about the tsunami that will strike the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area. Then it says, And if one look unto the land, behold darkness and sorrow. That's the dark day. And the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. We will see a dark day and notice that in verse 30, it says, and in that day, meaning at the day of war. In other words, we will see war and the dark day at the same time. But that's the second witness. Let's go to a third witness. Will these events happen at the same time? Job chapter one, verse 13 to 16, Job one, 13 to 16. They are feasting in verse 13 the children of Job, then in verse 15, mentions the communist invasion. It says, And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So the Sabians, we know that's referring to Egypt, and Egypt represents communism. How do we know the Sabians represent communism? We write down, First Chronicles 11 and verse 23, and also Isaiah 45 and verse 15, Egypt represents communism in ignoring of God's word and a persecuting of God's people is what Egypt did literally. And we see those same characteristics in communist nations such as Russia and China. Notice what it goes on to say in verse 15, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Both death and captivity. Then it says in verse 16, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burnt up the sheep. The sheep, that's the church and the servants, and consume them, I only am escaped alone to tell thee. The servants are those that are the preachers, the pastors, the leaders in the church. Both, we know judgment comes upon the church at the dark day, and the invasion, the tsunami, and these events in Job 1 happen nearly the same day. Let us look at another text, Nahum chapter 2. Nahum 2, beginning in verse 2, We'll read down to verse 8. Notice what it says. For the Lord hath turned away the excellency of Jacob as the excellency of Israel. So God has turned away the excellency. In other words, he has turned from his people. Why? They have apostatized and their probation has ended. Notice what it goes on to say in the context of that event. It says, and we know that the dark day brings to view the close of probation upon God's people. 
It says, For the emptiers have emptied them out and marred their vine branches. The shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation. And the fir trees shall be terribly shaken. God is bringing to view both war and the issue of the leadership dying. He says that they shall be terribly shaken. In other words, this is the shaking. It goes on to say in verse four, the chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like lightnings. In other words, it's talking about the cars or the tanks or the planes that are coming. They are looking like lightnings as they zip across the sky. It goes on to say, he shall recount his worthies. They shall stumble in their walk. They shall make haste to the wall thereof, and the defense shall be prepared. When God says he will recount his worthies, he's talking about, look, he's going to have to do over his numbers of the 144,000 because some have fallen into apostasy and another man is going to take their crown. The Gentiles are going to come in and take the crown that many that professed present truth have fallen away and God is going to replace them with others. Notice what he goes on to say in verse six, the gates of the rivers shall be opened. The dam will be opened and the palace shall be dissolved. Talking about the White House destroyed in America and Huzab shall be led away captive. Talking about individuals taken captive as a result of war. She shall be brought up and her maids shall lead her as with the voice of doves tabering upon their breast. But Nineveh is of old like a pool of water. Nineveh, like a pool of water? Well, didn't Jonah cry aloud against Nineveh to repent, saying destruction is coming if they didn't repent? And yet the city repented and God did not destroy the city? Likewise, God would give a warning concerning a city in these last days as the prophet Jonah did, and the city, if they don't repent, will be destroyed. Or in other words, if the ministers, if the ministry that is in St. Petersburg doesn't repent, the city will be destroyed. This is what we will see in the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area. And the Lord gave me two more witnesses when we look at Ezekiel, Chapter 32. So that was four. I'm going to give you six witnesses for this concerning the fact that the dark day and the tsunami can take place and the war on the same day. Notice what it says. And that sounds almost hard to believe. But God's word is true. And let every man be a liar. Notice what it says. Ezekiel 32 and verse 2. Talking about Egypt again, talking about the war, talking about the invasion from China and Russia. It says in Ezekiel 32, beginning in verse 2, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations, and thou art as a whale in the seas. In my margin, it says dragon. So a whale is a dragon in the seas. And we know that the dragon represents Egypt in Ezekiel 29, verse 1 through 3. It says, And thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troublest the waters with thy feet, and foulest the rivers. So it would be Egypt that would trouble the waters. In other words, that will cause problems amongst the nations. You see them taking control of Hong Kong and now looking to take control of Taiwan and even having the audacity to try and invade America. Skip down with me to verse six. It says, I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains and the rivers shall be full of thee. And when I shall put thee out. Now, God is talking about Egypt. God is talking about communism, China, Russia. He goes on to say, and when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon shall not give her light. That is a dark day when God puts Egypt, which is communist China, out. In other words, China will fall. She's a young lion, meaning she's a young nation rising. She's a young nation on the prowl. And in reality, when you consider China, it is the second leading nation in our world at this time. Second leading in GDP, in economics, 
and she now has the largest navy in the world showing china is on the rise but she's gonna fall notice what it says in verse 8 it says all the bright lights of heaven will i make dark over thee and will set darkness upon thy land saith the lord god i will also vex the hearts of many people when i shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known yea i will make many people amazed at thee and their kings shall be horribly afraid for thee when i shall brandish my sword before them and they shall tremble at every moment every man for his own life in the day of thy fall so egypt will fall and this is confirmed in ezekiel 29 verse 19 ezekiel 30 verse 1 through 8 ezekiel 30 and verse 25 egypt will fall in other words communist china will fall and we will witness the fall of communism in the very near future and another witness that the Lord gave me is when we consider that Joshua was at war at a time where God performed a sign in the heavens where the sun stood still. Many of you are familiar with Joshua chapter 10 and verse 12. It was at a time of war when God did a sign in the heavens. So it is highly likely we will see both of these events on the same day. Is what God is revealing from his word and the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established we looked at over five witnesses from the Bible notice what the Lord says to Joshua in Joshua chapter 10 verse 8 through 13 the Bible says and the Lord said unto Joshua fear them not for I have delivered them into thine hand, there shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. So here Joshua is about to go to war against Gilgal. Here Joshua is about to go to war. And notice what it says in verse 10. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth to Beth Horon and smote them to Azekah and unto Makeda. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were on the going down to Beth Horon that the Lord cast down great stones. Notice this great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah. So here we have stones coming from heaven, hitting the earth. Then it goes on to say, and they died. They were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. So take note that the sun stood still. That's a sign in the heaven. The stones fell from heaven and hit the earth and destroyed the enemies of the Lord. Also, we have war. And we have a great slaughter. So we have a slaughter. We have stones from heaven. We have war and we have a sign in the heavens. All four of these events happening on the same day And history must repeat itself. Therefore, we can expect in these last days for there to be a stone that hits the earth. A natural disaster, an asteroid or a meteor or some object hitting the earth causing a tsunami and that's the natural disaster the stone hitting the earth and a dark day at a time of war and there will be a great slaughter and this history must be repeated remember ecclesiastes 1 9 and ecclesiastes 3 15 teach us that history repeats itself therefore we can expect this event in the very near future Another confirmation that the Lord is revealing that a stone will hit the earth at a time of war is Daniel chapter 2 and verse 35. Notice what the Bible says in Daniel 2 and 35. We see that a stone hits the earth 
at a time of war. Notice what it says, Daniel 2.35. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away. Take note, the wind, we know that wind represents war based on Jeremiah 4, 11 to 13 and Jeremiah 51, verse 1 to 3. Wind represents war. It says, and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. God is showing us the last and final work that he does upon the earth at a time where there is war, at a time when an asteroid hits the earth, at a time where that asteroid causes a tsunami or whatever object from space hits the ocean and causes a massive tsunami causing death upon mankind at the same time of a dark day. All these events on the same day, Bible prophecy will be fulfilled. And this is the final movement of Bible prophecy showing us that Christ is soon to come and we must surrender to Jesus now before it is forever too late. So now that we have seen that on the dark day, Egypt will fall, I want you to see a second witness concerning this in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 1. Notice what it says. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. So the Lord gave Abraham a vision. Let's skip down to verse 12. It says, And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. So here we have darkness, a dark day. Verse 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. So here, Abram, the father of faith, has darkness come upon him, and he's given a vision. And as he's given a vision, he's told a prophecy concerning the children of Israel being taken into captivity, into slavery, referring to Egypt. And God says, that nation will I judge. So God is going to bring judgment upon Egypt, meaning judgment upon communist China. We can expect for China to fall. Notice what it goes on to say. Verse 15, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So it brings to view now the fourth generation. And we know that the fourth generation has ended now for Seventh-day Adventists in 2020. Some of you have seen our video concerning this. We'll put the link to that video in the description box. Now, Coming over to verse 17, it says, And it came to pass that when the sun went down, it was dark. Behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. So take note that there was a burning lamp at a time of a dark day. Let me repeat. There was a burning lamp at the time of a dark day. That means an asteroid. That means a space rock. That means a meteor is going to strike the ocean. And this connects to the Wormwood prophecy. Notice what it says concerning a burning lamp in Revelation chapter 8, beginning in verse 10. Notice what it says. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. There it is, a burning lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and a third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So God is bringing to view the connection between the dark day and wormwood. So on one day, we can expect 
for an invasion by Russia and China. And on the same day, we can expect a dark day and a tsunami upon the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area. These events happening on the same day. And then you know based on this word that communism, communist China will fall. Am I saying it's going to happen on the same day? It doesn't have to, but it's a possibility that communism as well will fall the same day. Why? Because America will retaliate as a result of the invasion. And we could even see a nuclear bomb go off in the east. God has shown that this is one chain of truth. And notice that it mentioned the burning lamp. And this connects to the parable of the virgins. Notice what it says, Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13 is where we find the parable of the five wise and the five foolish virgins. And we know this parable is referring to Seventh day Adventists. Some are trimming their lamps, they're searching the scriptures, and they're advancing with the light that God is sending, showing forth that the Holy Spirit is at work in their character because God only gives light to the righteous, while the foolish are not trimming their lamps. They're holding to beliefs that have already come to pass before 1915, and they have not advanced with the new light of God. And God is making it clear who the wise and who the foolish virgins are before the mark of the beast. Notice that this prophecy God has given to the church, that we may understand that we must advance with the light of God as time progresses. Otherwise, we are not walking by faith. So we can expect both of these events, the invasion and the dark day tsunami to take place on the same day. Also understand that Josiah Litch knew the exact day of the fulfillment of the fall of the Ottoman Empire. History must repeat itself. One other point to make is that when the pioneers were eating the book of Daniel, it was sweet in their mouth, but it was bitter in their belly. Therefore, this prophecy is sweet as we understand it, but it will be a bitter experience because there will be much death across America, both through the war and through the tsunami. And both events will take place on the same day. God has given us prophecy to strengthen our faith. How we receive the prophecies before the mark of the beast determine whether or not we are truly ready, whether or not we are really walking by faith. And God needs children that have faith in order to make it through the mark of the beast. This prophecy shows us that we can believe the word of God, that God's word is true, and that we can walk by faith as we walk by the word. Romans 10 and verse 17 Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And it is by faith that we are saved, because the Bible says, the just shall live by faith, which means they live by every word of God. Notice what it says in John chapter 13 and verse 19. It says, now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. God is strengthening our faith by giving us the prophecies before the mark of the beast that the work of the fourth angel may lighten the earth with the glory of God. Let us surrender to God's word that we may experience both the former and the latter rain.